Welcome to Business in Japan Television. When we think of technological development, many of us envision independent, out-of-the-box thinkers working on high-tech ideas alone in their labs or offices. In reality, many ideas come from academic research. In fact, universities have been called business incubators. But how do these innovations reach a wider audience? Dr. Michael Avedisian of Montreal's McGill University Des Hotel Faculty of Management is an expert in the technology transfer process. He offers his expertise in this area through McGill's MBA program in Japan. Dr. Avedisian, thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure to be here, Mike. Can you tell us exactly what is technology transfer? The process starts with a report of invention submitted by the researchers, the inventors, and this report of invention is then uh, put through a triage and a due diligence carried out on the basis of three criteria. The first criteria is patentability. Is the discovery patentable or not? The second criteria is commercial viability. Is there a market need and a want? Uh, how big is the market? What is the competitive uh, rivalry? and what is the customer pain that this technology will address. And the third criteria is the robustness of the science. Is it uh, breakthrough science or is it basically incremental science? Dr. Avedisian, how important are entrepreneurs in the spin-off of ideas? Absolutely critical. I was on the board of directors of a venture capital firm and often we had entrepreneurs come in to present their uh, ideas and their business, uh, business uh, plan. Often we would uh, be very impressed with the entrepreneur and not so impressed with the idea. And we would turn, uh, 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 turn around and say to the entrepreneur, well, we like you very much, but we don't like your idea. But we have another idea here that maybe would be appropriate for you to work on. Um, in other cases, um, the entrepreneur could have a great idea, but we were not so impressed with the uh, entrepreneur himself, in which case we would, uh, we would turn it down. So the entrepreneur and his team is absolutely critical to the success of, uh, uh, of the business. What are important things to look out for when commercializing a product? Well, what we look for in a product idea uh, is its application. If it's a new product technology applied to an existing market, we call that faster, better, cheaper. If it's a new product applied to uh, a new market application, then we call that brave new world, and that's really blockbuster. So what we look for is either faster, better, cheaper, or brave new world ideas. Now, in this era of budget cutbacks, have universities uh, like McGill and others had to be more selective in the research that they do? The short answer is yes. Right now, most Western countries are suffering the economic crisis of large government debts and uh, operating deficits. Um, and this is exacerbated by low GDP growth. Uh, for example, in the OECD countries, they're projecting that uh, the growth will only be about 1.35% over the next decade. Governments are looking towards innovation to help them solve this low GDP growth uh, uh, phenomena. And innovation and small and medium-sized enterprises, which are the engine of the economy, are, is, one, uh, is one approach. Are there differences in the technology transfer process between Japan and the West? Well, in short, I would uh, say risk and failure. It's interesting, uh, last year, the McGill Japan MBA program hosted a forum, which was led by uh, Phil O'Neill, the director of the program. And the main issue that we discussed in this forum, I was a panel member, was the differences between Japan and North America in terms of entrepreneurial uh, environment. And the things that we focused on were just that, risk and failure. And so whereas North America was, was built by immigrants who took large risks, 
and the culture supports risk and failure, whereas which is quite acceptable in North America and in Japan, the notion of risk and failure, uh, of course, are are quite different. Uh, Japanese children from a very early age are nurtured to go to a good school with a name brand, uh, to get a good degree, and then upon graduation, uh, work for a large company with, uh, with a good name, and they're not encouraged to take risk, and failure is not necessarily as acceptable here as it is in North America. Dr. Avedisian, how can a university improve its technology transfer process? In the university, uh, universities carry out open research, uh, open dissemination of knowledge by publications and giving papers, um, and uh, also um, the fact that uh, universities are um, uh, research-oriented and research carried out for the benefit of creating new knowledge, whereas the culture of uh, a, a private sector company is one to uh, guard confidentiality, the protection of intellectual property, keeping things closely guarded, and developing sustainable uh, competitive uh, advantage. And so I believe if universities can find a way to open themselves up for business and bridge the two solitudes through reasonable accommodation, I think this is the best place uh, to start. Dr. Abedizian, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Dr. Michael Abedizian of McGill University's MBA program in Japan. Thanks for watching Business in Japan Television.